Hi, it's David from Life with Parkinson's. If you're new here, welcome. We hope you'll consider subscribing. Everyone else, thank you for coming back to watch this episode of Fatigue and Parkinson's Disease, Three Possible Solutions. I wonder what they are. This episode is based mostly on personal experience, as I know there are a number of things that can cause fatigue. I can only hope that you benefit from my battle with each of them. There is a lot of surprising information in this episode, so let's get right to it. ATP, not the tennis tour, the ATP that's found in our body, known as adenosine triphosphate, I learned a new word this week, in my opinion is probably one of the biggest things that's causing fatigue in our bodies. Now, I ask you to remember that I'm not an expert, I'm not a science expert, I'm not a biology expert, I'm just a person with Parkinson's digging a little bit deeper, trying to find out what's bugging my state of health. Also, this episode is a bit of a continuation of one I did earlier called Fatigue and Parkinson's Disease. In that one, I kind of base it mostly on the medical information out there. So I'll have a link at the end of the video so you can check that video out when you're done with this one. Basically, adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is just a molecule found in every cell of all living things, basically nearly, nearly every cell of all living things, that converts food into usable energy by the body. And it also picks up like the oxygen-induced energy through the mitochondria as well. So that's basically how it works. If you want me to dig deeper, and I don't mind doing that if you're interested in finding out more, let me know in the comments below. This is how I kind of look at ATP, because I've been struggling a lot from this. Like, I'll have breakfast in the morning, and then I'll go for a walk, and then I'll be off like 15 minutes later. I'll walk out the door completely on, ready for a walk, and I'll be like, oh, okay, I'm going to do like three, four, maybe five kilometers. I'll start doing some laps around the complex, and it's like 15 minutes later, I'm exhausted. And my legs are locking up, so I had to reach out for help from Michael Highland at Parkinson's Disease Education. This is a shout out to you, buddy. Thank you for your help. I just basically found that I was eating the wrong foods. So ATP requires us not just to only eat, but to eat the right foods that it can convert easily into energy. Because there are so many different things attacking our bodies with Parkinson's and draining our energy off. So when I found that I started eating more of the correct foods, like green leafy veg vegetables, foods that provide nitric oxide, making sure I'm getting my vitamin B12, my energy started working a little bit better. So I like to look at it through the lens of a marathon runner. I think we can all relate to that. We all ran some time, probably in high school. But a marathon runner will do all this preparation, take care of their bodies, make sure they're eating right, getting enough rest, eating the correct foods, and making sure that they store enough energy up to complete their race and hopefully place well. My question here though is, why don't we see ourselves as that marathon runner Why, when we have Parkinson's disease? I realize that everyone doesn't do this, but I do it from time to time. Why do we always, okay, why do we often see ourselves as, as that invalid person with Parkinson's disease and can kind of push our needs off to the side? And we've got to stop doing that. And I'm not just talking about you guys. I'm not picking on anybody out there. I do this quite often to myself. I'll push my needs to the side because I'm like, oh, I have Parkinson's. I'm, I guess I'm not really as important as everybody else, which is crazy talk. Fatigue is so debilitating. I'll say it again. Fatigue is so debilitating. When we lay down on the couch for an hour and wake up so tired from our nap that we can't even lift a glass of water to our face to take a drink, fatigue is so debilitating. When we're sitting in the shower on our shower chair, waiting for our pills to kick in so we can get out of the shower, fatigue is so debilitating. It just leaves us out from so many wonderful things that we could be doing. It's just so frustrating. We've got to find the answers. We've got to, or we're just never going to be able to do anything. So thank you for allowing me that rant. Please don't take it personal. I just, 
I did actually sit in the shower, on my shower chair for about an hour one day, waiting for my pills to kick in so I could get out. Fatigue is so debilitating. Okay, <laughs> everyone's probably excited about this. Next part of the video, fluoride. Now, I know I'm going to step on a lot of toes here when I say that fluoride is one of the things I found that bothers me. It really zaps my energy. So when I switched over to a nano hydroxypaptate, hopefully I said that right. When I switched over to a nano hydroxypaptite toothpaste, I was fine. But I would have my dinner. I usually brush my teeth after breakfast and dinner, and floss as well in there. But after dinner, I would brush my teeth and I would be off like half an hour later. I'm like, what is going on? And thankfully I remembered from a while back when I was making the mitochondria episode my aunt said that, hey, there's something out there, I remember from biology, that bothers your mitochondria. And it turned out she pointed me towards fluoride. And I was like, what? Fluoride does damage to mitochondria? How is that even possible? I grew up in a town that added fluoride to the drinking water to give us better teeth. Wasn't that the right thing to do? Well, I found this last week or two, looking through this while well, writing up this episode, that fluoride actually has neurotoxin properties. I'm going to say it again. Fluoride, if it's administered daily above the recommended optimal daily dose, it has neurotoxic properties. It actually can do a lot of damage to our brains. What I have done now is I've swapped out my fluoride toothpaste, I've swapped out my fluoride mouthwash, and I feel a lot better. I'm actually going out for walks in the evening after dinner, which I haven't been able to do for a very long time. And if you're wondering what hydroxy... I said it wrong earlier. I just looked at my notes now. If you're wondering what hydroxyapeptide is, it is a form of calcium that makes up 97% of your tooth enamel and nearly 70% of the dentin in your teeth. The rest of your enamel is actually composed of water, collagen, and other proteins. Hydroxyapeptite is absorbed by the teeth and fills the enamel fissure caused by demineralization. The information I read, the studies I looked at this week, is basically a fluoride toothpaste and a hydroxyapeptite toothpaste. There's not a lot of difference between them. They both do the same job, and the hydroxyapeptite toothpaste actually is a little bit more effective on fixing what has caused the cavity rather than just the cavity itself. Now, this was not an easy subject for me to accept, okay? When I read that fluoride it has toxic properties, I was like, yeah, right. They wouldn't put that in the water when I was growing up if they knew it was toxic, would they? Fluoride seems to fit in with lead, mercury, and other poisons that cause chemical brain drain. The effect of each toxin may be small, but the combined damage on a population scale can be serious especially because the brain power of the next generation is crucial to all of us. That really took me by storm. And when I looked it up, yes, fluoride can cause a lot of problems for young children even before they're born. One other expert said, Studies have suggested that fluoride is a human developmental neurotoxin that reduces measures of intelligence in children, placing it into the same category as toxic metals, lead, methylmercury, arsenic, and polychlorinated biphenyls. I'm not trying to scare people. I'm not trying to cause up a big stir here on the internet. I'm just saying fluoride, when above the recommended daily dose, can be harmful to people. That's all I'm saying. And if you're interested in the hydroxyapeptite products, I'll have Amazon links to them in the description below where you can check them out. I'm using the orange flavored toothpaste. It's really good. Last part of the video. Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to talk about oxidative stress. And that is basically when your harmful free radicals outnumber the amount of antioxidants in your body. And it can wear you down pretty quickly. And it's a real issue for people with neurodegenerative diseases, such as Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and others. And if you remember a while back about the glutathione video, when our glutathione becomes depleted in our brain, we don't really have a lot more defense systems against the harmful free radicals. 
and then the harmful re free radicals can just go do their damage to whatever part they want, including the dopamine producing areas. And in my opinion, when we leave ourselves open to that attack, we really should be restocking our glutathione to fend off those harmful free radicals and protect ourselves. And in my opinion, this is a big cause of fatigue because when our glutathione becomes depleted in our brain, it really affects our sleep. And when we're not, when we're not getting enough sleep, I don't, I don't know if I have to tell you guys, but when I don't get enough sleep, my symptoms increase and my brain just doesn't work as well for most of the day. And it's really frustrating. It's very fatiguing. And I'll put more product links in the description below for the glutathione as well, so you, can guys, so you guys can check it out. So thank you everyone for listening to my rants today. And I just ask you to remember that I'm not an expert. I'm just someone with Parkinson's doing the best I can to explain this information to you. And that link for the other video about fatigue and Parkinson's should be popping up somewhere around here. So once you're done here, I'll see you over there. So thank you for continuing to take this journey together. Thank you for liking, subscribing, watching, and sharing this channel with your family and friends. If you have a question or a comment below, I will see you on the next one. Have a good day. Goodbye.